Hi guys, and welcome to this video on volume and capacity. My name's Darren, otherwise known as Maths Guru. Really good to see you. Before we start, remember, you can head over to mathsguru.com, sign up for a free account. Yes, they're free, and you can see these videos ordered by the textbook with downloadable notes. Volume and capacity. <coughs> Believe it or not, they're the same thing. Volume uh, is for everything that's not fluids, all right? Now, that seems a bit weird, but generally speaking, when we deal with liquids, water, or, or gases, in fact, we deal with things called capacities, right? Exactly the same working out. I'm gonna tell you now exactly the same working out, just slightly different units. All right, so what is volume? Volume is the space inside. And you're gonna go, well, hold on a moment, you told me that's what area was. Yes, I know. But area is two dimensional, right? So if we recap what we did before, when we work out the area of a shape, we are looking for absolutely the space inside. But that area, is two dimensional. So that might be two, that might be three, and in which case my area would be two times three or six. Now, because we haven't got units, I would write the word units squared, right? So there we go, two times three. Again, if you want a quick recap of what we did before, I always put a right angle and I make sure that I just connect the two sides for that one right angle, though that times that, all right? Happy, 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 happy? Good, so there's my area. But as I said before, this is a two dimensional shape. So we only multiply those two dimensions together. Volume, on the other hand, deals with three dimensional shapes, right? So our shape has to be 3D. And a lot of people turn around and say, I hate drawing 3D shapes. Let me show you how to draw a 3D cube. Always draw the front face first. So all I've done is I've drawn a square. And then I'm just gonna extend my lines back and you notice they're all at the same angle and they all have the same length. This is why drawing on squared paper is amazing. The number of people who seemingly do maths on lined books really terrifies me. Please don't use a lined book. And then to finish the shape off, you just join those together and I have just drawn a cube. Right, now it's three dimensional. So the volume is how much stuff I can fit inside there, all right? Uh, it could be sand, it could be mud, it can be all sorts of different stuff. You say mud, it's just gonna look at my garden. So we are looking for how much stuff can fit in there. Now, how do we do that? Well, we need a formula again, don't we? All right, a formula. Now, when we have three-dimensional shapes, we normally say things like length times width times height. And again, I'll go back to my Shrek drawing for my daughter. Again, that was not me. I did not color that in, all right? But Shrek, all right? This isn't three-dimensional, but what is this? Is this the width? Is it the height? What's this, is this a length, is it a height? Because as soon as I change that shape around, the values change. What is this now? Is that the length, is that the width, is that the base? Well, what about if I hold it that way? Now, okay, that's not particularly useful because theoretically it's two dimensional, it's not. But if I had something square, which I don't, the same principle applies. It's like, oh, which one's the length, which one's the width? So, we could call this L, W, and H if you wanted to. And so in which case, you know, traditionally we'd have volume is equal to length times width times height. I hate L because it looks like a one. I don't think of it that way. I'm gonna go back and once again, I'm going to choose one corner of my shape. So when I try and find the volume, I choose one corner and I do that times that times that. Or now that's not gonna work particularly well because it's coming into the camera, but it's this one times this one times this one. I multiply the three lines heading away from that corner. So to give you, uh, let's zoom in a moment, that means I would multiply that length by that length by that length. And that is literally it. Now you're gonna try and say, but that's exactly the same. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. But I need to remember it in my way. Don't judge. So if I have an example then, let's draw a cuboid. All right, now the difference between the cube and a cuboid is basically a cuboid is rectangular. Cube is like a sugar cube, all the lengths are the same. So in this situation here, that would probably be a cube because all my lengths are the same. So if I now say let that be four centimeters, five centimeters, and two centimeters, I am going to choose one corner. If I want to find the volume, there is my corner, and I'm gonna do that times that times that. That is my volume. I know that this length here is five, 
I know that length there is two because it's given to me. And this length here is going to be exactly the same as that length there. So always look for similar lengths. So that's going to be four centimeters. So in which case now my volume is equal to five times four times two. Now it doesn't actually matter which order you do the calculation because it's always going to be the same. All right, so it doesn't matter if I write down four times five times two, but as I normally do, I do things in pairs. So five times four is 20 times by two, and 20 times two is 40. My units are centimeters, but what is the floating number? Well, because we're doing a length times a length times a length, we've got three lengths. And so, believe it or not, we have a floaty three. It's also the shape is three dimensional. And what you notice there is that my units are centimeters cubed. Well, in a previous video, we noticed that a lot of our lengths are done in terms of millimeters, centimeters, meters, and kilometers. And actually, our volumes can be exactly the same, all right? So our units of volume would be millimeters cubed, centimeters cubed, meters cubed, and kilometers cubed, right? So that's for everything that isn't a fluid. <sighs> what about if we have fluids? Well, believe it or not, when we have fluids, otherwise known as capacities, all right, we just do exactly the same calculation, believe it or not, because they're going to give you lengths in terms of millimeters, centimeters, kilometers, uh, um, meters, millimeters, centimeters, meters, kilometers, whatever. But then you're going to use a conversion chart, or I'm going to talk about the conversions now, but capacities are measured in things like, all right, new wording. So milliliters, you may have met that in science, all right? So you may have done that in science, milliliters, liters, everyone's done liters because if you buy milk, it's, it's sold in liters, all right? Kilo liters, Ooh, kilo, oh, kilogram, kilogram, kilo. And stupid point of information, apparently it's supposed to be pronounced kilo. It's supposed to be kilogram. But for some reason, somebody mispronounced it. Uh, uh, um, uh, someone on, I don't know where they were, but they were like, ah, oh, it's a kilogram. And, and it just sort of took off. But apparently it's supposed to be kilogram or kiloliter, which just sounds stupid. And this one here is a megaliter, all right, megaliter. Now to be able to convert between those, well, luckily, these ones are quite nice. And uh, let's change the pen color. To go from liters to milliliters, you times by a thousand. To go from kiloliters to liters, you times by a thousand. And to go from megaliters to kiloliters, you times by a thousand as well. Well, finally, something that makes sense, not 10, 100, 1,000, but 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. And then when we do it the other way, we divide by a thousand as well. All right, so there we go. So that's my capacities, but I still haven't necessarily told you how do we go from millimeters cubed to milliliters or centimeters cubed to milliliters, whatever else. Well, this is where life gets interesting because this is the stuff you're gonna have to write in your summary book. And there we go, there are our conversions. So the ones that are really, really important to remember is one millimeter, uh, one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed. Oh, hold on a moment. So if we go back to my previous answer, when I have now found this in centimeters cubed, that's 40 centimeters cubed, that now means that if I know that one milliliter is one centimeter cubed, then I could also write this down as 40 milliliters. Oh my goodness. So in that situation, beautiful. When it's centimeters cubed, we just change it for milliliters. Now, once we've gone to milliliters, we can actually then convert into liters because we know 1000 milliliters is equal to one liter. Aha, uh -huh. and the other one is just there for, well, it's in the textbook really. Uh, Cambridge, thank you very much for allowing me to use your example. So there are the conversions. So what I'm now saying is when you are wanting to work out a capacity, the first thing you do is you work out the volume as you would normally, all right? So when you do capacity, do the volume first and then convert to liters, milliliters, or whatever it's asking you to do. Oh, okay, let's do some examples. So here's just one example. Thank you very much, Cambridge, for allowing me to use your examples. Your textbooks are amazing. If you're using the Cambridge textbooks, really, you are very, very lucky. Okay, so where do we go with this one? Right, we want to find the volume. So I'm gonna choose a corner, and I'm going to look at that times that times that, because it's a cuboid. 
All right, do I know my lengths? I've got, yep, this one here is four. This one here is six. Do I know the length of that one there? Yep, it's two. So my volume here is equal to two times four times six. Well, two times four is eight. Eight times six is 48 meters with a floaty three. Ooh, thank you very much. Very, very happy. And what you notice is it's not particularly challenging, that particular question. So let's look at the next one. So the next question is, find the capacity. This is a worded question. All right, find the capacity in litres of a container that is a rectangular prism. All right, so it's a rectangular prism. I'm just going to draw a random rectangular prism that is 20 centimetres long. So I'm going to write 20 centimetres here. It is 10 centimetres wide. I'm just going to arbitrarily write that as 10 centimetres and 15 centimetres high. All right, find the capacity. So there is my point. I'm going to do this times this times this. All right, moving it up just a little bit. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is work out my volume. Now I know that my volume is going to be 20 times 10 times 15. All right, so... Doing these two first, because I always break it down into stages, becomes 200 times 15. And then just if I want to, bang it in my calculator so that I don't make any mistakes, 200 times 15 gives me 3,000. Now, a lot of you are going, you could have done that in your head. And I was like, I could have done. Now, 3,000 centimeters, what is that? Cubed. Now, that's my volume, but it wants my capacity. And we've got to try and remember, because it wants it in liters. So one centimeter cubed is one milliliter. So I now know that my capacity is equal to 3,000 milliliters. And then what do we know? We know that there are 1,000 milliliters is one liter. So if I now divide that by 1,000, I get three liters. ka -ching. So we always, as I've said before, always have to work out the volume first in centimeters cubed, meters cubed, whatever else, and then we use our conversions to help us do it. And ladies and gentlemen, there we go. That's the end of this lesson. Hopefully you found it useful. Go out there, practice, do some questions, spread the word about my channel, about Maths Guru, head over there, download the notes. Uh, if not, hopefully I'll see you in another video. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Yes, this is the end of another video. If you haven't already done so, can you click on my subscribe button? Yes, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I know that you are watching. Yes, it's greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I feel like I'm sitting here just talking to myself. And then, yes, there is mathsguru.com, of which you can see a still of now. And what is over there? Well, all the videos ordered by textbook, ordered by topic. You can search for the videos. You can download notes time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more coming up. Yeah, it's absolutely free to join. So I'm done. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in another video. Give me a shout out to your mates if you can. I just want to make sure that everyone finds maths interesting and easy. All right, take care, guys. See you again. Bye. -bye. Stay safe.